So uh, we're here to talk about how to get investors to ape into your project. So if you're already an investor, you can leave the room. Okay, going once, all right. And if you've got any friends who want to learn how to fundraise, tell them to get in here now. There's only a few seats left. Uh, FOMO, that's another lesson. Uh, my friend here, Richard Muirhead. Richard? Hi, everybody. Thanks, Seven. Uh, and uh, people call me Seven, but uh, real name is Stephen Waterhouse. Hey, this slide, how does it work? Okay, cool. So uh, Richard looked at this definition of aping in. Aping in is a term that's used a lot in the space and it's sort of irreverent. Um, but it turns out it has an urban dictionary meaning. Yeah, and look, you, you can read this, you can read it later, but I think the key takeaway from this is that despite the bad reputation that aping might sometimes have, it's actually the pinnacle of investing practices. What it means is that your level of synthesis conviction around the investment you're making is so high that you go in and you hold forever with diamond hands, the greatest force known to humankind. Now, I mean, joking aside, we're actually not going to hold forever, but that's, that's a good, for a long time at least. VCs, it feels relative to the crypto space, the VC hold period is pretty long. We're actually looking at a kind of, you know, 10 year horizon. So it's, that's extremely long by, you know, uh, crypto. No, it's all of crypto, basically. And, but the other important thing about it is that um, it's all of the things that happen before you encounter often, you know, a, a team uh, with a great idea. Um, uh, a great market, uh, a great set of a business models, all of those things that, that have happened before that lead you to feel that this is the, the set of people you want to partner with. Yeah, it's like there's a lot, lots of times you've got really great teams, really great ideas, but people just have no idea how to fundraise. And it's a question I get a lot. So, this might, fucking thing doesn't work. Okay, so a little bit about who we are and then we're going to move quickly through this. So, Richard, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, apparently we actually uh, met at university, it is actually true, both doing engineering, him much more seriously than me. Um, he did help me out at least once on some maths. Um, and then after that, uh, I built a telecom software company um, back in the day when, you know, we were transitioning to data networks. We had an IPO, which was, which was fun, that's now owned by Oracle. Uh, then I helped... Um, Axel Partners set up uh, in Europe 20 years ago now as an entrepreneur. Actually, who knows what an EIR is? It's a kind of VC term, no freaking idea. So it, an EIR stands for Entrepreneur in Residence, um, which is a kind of fancy term for being given a blank sheet of paper and said, go build a billion dollar company. Um, that got me some insight into venture capital because Axel were pretty storied already and they were building up a European operation I came out of that and built something that was very early in the DevOps and cloud space on the infrastructure side, which we sold to BMC Software in 2009. Um, emerged out of that and started investing, um, jumped into one of my investments, and ran it for a year, that sold that to CA Technologies. But really since 2012, and in particular from 2013, when um, in the spring of, of that year, Seven told me that I should take another look at Bitcoin, got drawn into the whole Bitcoin blockchain, Web3 space. Woo! Yeah, we got censored. No, we, we, have to, um, we really have to riff. We'll just keep going. Uh, I've done a whole bunch of stuff. I'm from the UK, now live in Lisbon, and I got into crypto in 2013, uh, built a fund, built a company, and I work with him as well. Um, Going to move a little faster. So. We're looking for you, right? So a lot of people are like, oh, I, don't, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. Like, how am I going to raise money? What's going on? Like, why? It doesn't really matter. Um, you could be kind of almost from any walk of life at this point in crypto. If you've got the right team, you've got the right idea, you probably could make it. I mean, not saying you're definitely going to make it, but you might make it. Um, so exper but experience is really helpful. Like, if you've been in this space for a little while, if you started, like, contributing to things, like, getting involved in things, these are definitely things we look at. But... The, one of the biggest things we look for, and it's, it's less location nowadays, especially after COVID, is strong teams. We're looking for teams that gel, teams that look like they're going to um, stay together, like, you know, have good dynamics. Um, there's like, you know, kind of all the key components we're looking for there. Um, so these are some of the things that we're really looking for. You know anything? To demonstrate good teamwork, I'm going to ask, do you want me to add more to this or should we go to the next slide? I actually can't hear what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> good. It's like, yeah, I, I hear this, no, I hear the only... microphone. 
anything, uh, nothing to add other than that cannot emphasize more that you get a, a very, you get a feeling for meeting the pe people. I mean, even over Zoom, but especially in person, the individuals, how they complement each other, and how, you know, you might be able to work with them over time. And that's, that's pretty important. And it's like, I think the thing to remember is that, like, our job is to look at deals all day long. We look at hundreds of deals a year. So we can kind of smell it when it doesn't feel right. When the team doesn't feel right, if there's something wrong, we're gonna, we're gonna like, you know, like, yeah, this doesn't feel right. And then you'll get the message like, oh yeah, we're passing for blah, blah, blah reason. But it's, it's like, usually like, something's wrong, right? So if you, if you think there's something wrong with your team, there probably is something wrong with your team, fix it before you try and do this stuff, because once you get engaged, it becomes a whole thing. Um, yeah, the, the biggest part of this, and this is redone a lot, you know, like TED talks about this stuff, but telling stories, right? And I, I'm personally less interested in what's the unmet need that your new thing is gonna solve. I'm really interested in what's your vision of the future. Does that vision of the future match my vision of the future? Because I, you know, obviously I have like an idea where I think things are going. It may not, it may be something brand new, in which case we'll be like, oh, that's cool, interesting surprise. And how is what you're gonna do be gonna come crucial and intrinsic to that future? Right, so you think about like, you know, the metaverse doesn't have some like unmet need. I'm not sitting there going, God, I really wish I had like a new outfit for my me bit. It's like, but maybe that is, maybe that is the future. Maybe like fashion for me bits and other things is gonna be a huge thing one day. I mean, when OpenSea started, people weren't sitting around going, God, I really wish I had someone spend my like money on NFTs. But now it's like a really big deal, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so one way I think about this is definitely that the, the founders that seem most compelling and powerful literally seem like they have had that glimpse, you know, into the future. They have come back from the future and describing how it's going to be. And then telling a story about that that is totally concrete, not abstract, not talking about technologies coming together and features and bells and whistles, whistles and the rest of it, but actually describing how it's being used. But it's more than that as well. It's telling the story of how you came into that insight and came together as a team and then came into building that company. That story is crucial as well. Um, how do you find investors? You go out, right? Well, also you stay in. So it's like, go out and stay in. It's like, like Boris's thing, right? Um, so it, it, it's, it's really changed even in the last year or two, um, but this was, this was a sort of a trend. I feel like COVID sort of accelerated a lot of things that we were already doing in, in this space. Um, you're not going to find people if you don't engage. You're not. You're just like. It's not going to like. Someone's going to like. Oh, hey, you know, venture capital guys sitting there, investors sitting there going trying to find you. You've got to find them, and then the flywheel starts. Um, another really important thing I think is is being part of the ecosystem um, to the extent that you can invest, even if it's a small amount, get involved, contribute some time, sort of sweat equity. There's so many ways to do this stuff now. Um, if you're a developer, like really big, you know, kind of active GitHub, getting involved in Gitcoin projects, these things all start creating signals and then connect you with people that then, you know, lead to another connections and so on. But I, I also like one thing, it's not on the slide, but if you're thinking you need someone else to help you raise money, you're doing it wrong. You're not going to make it. So you are going to be, as the key people, you're going to be fundraising forever, right? And well, I mean, until you stop doing what you're doing in the sense that you're always selling. You're always selling your vision, you're always selling your company. If you don't know how to do that, you better learn how to do that or find someone on your team who's gonna do that. Hiring someone else to do that is, is like, usually I just walk away when I see that deal. I'm like, yeah, this person doesn't know how to fundraise. I don't wanna fundraise with this other person who's taking a commission. Like, they need to figure that out. So I think that's a strong thing to figure, to, to figure through, right? Yeah, absolutely underline that. If there's some third party involved, uh, or, you know, God forbid, like a bank or something trying to help fundraise, yeah, is that a, that's a full letter word here, of course, bank. Um, but, you know, then we're not even going to look at it most, most likely. But the other thing to underline here is, and this does not need kind of explaining probably to, to individuals here, that how important community is. And if you generate good community, not just broadly, but specifically in your space, and people start saying great things about you, that comes back. That comes back to, you know, the investors. And there's no more powerful way to understand that something is getting traction and popularity and it could well turn out to be the next hot thing than hearing it from other people. Um, so like once you've got some investors, you gotta, you gotta keep engaged, right? It's, it's, it's not okay to sort of send an email out once or said, you know, talk to somebody once and think that they're suddenly gonna start thinking about you. Remember, investors are overwhelmed by deal flow. They just don't even know how to like process things. It's like, 
There's like special plans of software being written for this stuff. So this is like a general theory of, um, of just sort of how you engage with new people. So you have to tell them stories, you could, like all these things, but you also gotta like, um, Tell people something interesting each time. So you might be like, hey, I've got an update for you. Oh, and by the way, did you see this piece of news that's relevant to our space or something interesting that you found out? You could be constantly gathering this kind of, you know, sort of like tip bits and so on. And, and then this is a really simple trick, is that, is that do so, tell people you're gonna do something, then do it, and then tell them you've done it. And then keep doing that. And after a while, they're like, oh my God, this person's consistent. They actually do what they say. And, and it's a very simple technique, but it sends a lot of signal to investors and you know, hopefully you're not tricking us, but you know, the idea is that it, that it actually works out. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a thing, I think it's Fred Wilson talked about kind of you know, having enough dots to kind of start to see the pattern and the line. And so, I mean, that's really what investors are looking for, uh, rather than just have to see the one point in time, the snapshot, and really just project for, from there. So if you can help doing that by repeatedly come back with the update, it's great. But, the, the heart of this is don't actually pitch in a thing. Just be telling the, the story and sharing the updates and then suddenly have that story all kind of yeah. make sense and unfold as, as Stephen was just saying. I, that sort of leads into the slide is that, is that um, it's, it's kind of like you should succeed whether or not you raise money. It's, it's kind of like the, the thinking process. It sounds a bit like new age, but, but it's about like the idea is, is that your, your milestone is not to raise money. Your milestone is, is, is way beyond that. My, fundraising is just this little step on the way that's sort of annoying and irrelevant and will get, we'll get done. But if you can convince people that you're going to do it anyway, the train is leaving the station whether you get on it or not, then people will generally get in and create this stuff, which is the sort of you know, FOMO thing. Um, and so a, another thing here is... Um, it's kind of like a strategy for how you select investors. It's not, there's not a slide on this, but most people go out and they're like, I've got to find you know, huge fund, like this you know, marquee name that when I do a press release, everyone will look at me because I got whoever in, right? Another way to think about this is instead of trying to find them and to convince them, you convince the smaller investors, you convince the angels, people who are really influential, the people who talk to them. And if you do enough of that and you get enough of those people in your deal, the big guys will come to you anyway. They'll actually find you. They'll like come like knocking on the door because they'll have heard about the deal, right? Yeah. So it's, a, it's about creating that inevitability, you know, you know, right up front through your own confidence, through your own attitude. Um, and we already said it. Like the assumption is here. You know, you, your idea is incredible. Your the market is going to be or is already enormous. You know, the way you're going to put together your token design and mechanics is spot on. N team, it's all falling into place, and that you want to have the feeling that and you want to have that feeling that you know exactly where you're going, you're going to be shooting right, right through this first milestone of fundraising all the way through to your, your vision. And the reason it's so important in particular to create FOMO is that despite what they might tell you, investors rarely are able to have sufficient confidence around something you know, just that nobody else is looking at and thinking, I want to go for that. Generally speaking, to the point that Seven raised, there are 200 new opportunities per month and at any point in time, you're going to have a dozen that you're trying to work out, either you're going to be able to you know, work with them or, in fact, selecting the one to focus on. So having that clarity of the ones that really feel this one is inevitable and is slipping out of your grasp is, is key. All right, that's, that's pretty much the tutorial. Um, we're available for questions, just a kind of little bit of kind of what we've done. I'm not going to go through any of these, actually, or all of these, but this is some of the deals that Fabric Ventures has done in the last few years. Um, little pitch on the fund. We've just raised, uh, can we talk about this? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we just raised uh, a fund um, backed by a European investment fund, um, and we've got plenty of money to invest, and we're looking forward to meeting you. And uh, this is a bit about the team. There's a couple of people in the audience, two of them right there. Um, at the front, <laughs> hands up. Let's come find these two and, and pitch them your deal. And there's some more people kicking around somewhere, or they better be. Uh, I see a few more people from Fabric. Um, uh, team is based like kind of all over the place. We've got a couple people in London um, and Luxembourg, uh, two of us in Lisbon, Berlin, France, so, like very like European focused. Um, ask us anything, I guess. Like who's got a question, who wants to... Uh, learn how to do this stuff. I'm going to ask you, is back. this real? Because it just popped up and it says 12 minutes to go. He just wants us to wrap it up. So let's do a couple so of questions not, not and then uh, give, the, 
Give them some time back. We'll get a freebie for that, right? NFT? Down here. Hey guys, uh, thank you for a great presentation. You both uh, look great on the, on the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, my question actually about token raise, and uh, it is, you mentioned like, uh, uh, you better speak uh, first to the smaller investors like angels, and then you get a bigger right. fund. So what's the best strategy in your way of fundraising for a token? Like, do you find first the lead investor, oh, yeah. and then force all your efforts on finding a lead investor? Or you better yeah. talk to high-risk uh, angels and smaller yeah. so groups? I, my personal opinion, having sort of done this a few different ways and then also seen deals come to us, is it, it actually depends on the stage. So in the, in the first stage, I think that many strategies can work, but one strategy that, that I prefer is to engage with people who believe in it, like angel investors, people who might even be involved um, you know, in, on some other level, people who are like, in a lot of the projects we do, people are providing liquidity or like partners and so on, and then get them involved, because those conversations are quick and easy and they don't have to go through a process, they're just like, hey, yeah, here's, here's the money, let's go. And then as you want to build and finish that round out, then sure, then that conversation will actually probably most likely go directly to some of the funds like us, because we'll hear about it. We're like, oh, hey, we'll come find you. Um, but e even if it doesn't, then you have um, a stronger basis to have that conversation with funds that just like, we, you know, we have more process, we have like kind of like things to do, we've got more, it's just like kind of like it takes longer for us to sometimes make decisions than, you know, like some people you might meet here, right? Um, and then the next phase, so the next round, I think it's actually healthy to have a lead because what happens then is it's usually someone who's not been in the round before and then they're coming in and kind of like validating the round, if you like, or often pricing the round in a different way. Uh, if it's just insiders in the first round going into, into the next round, it, it, it can be okay, but it just sort of depends, I think, second stage. And the only thing I'd add to that is that actually a pretty cool trick is not to be fundraising. I mean, if you want to secure your lead, a, a real lead is going to want to try and get in early. So if you're saying we're fundraising and we're talking to a whole bunch of people, then, they, you know, then they're going to go, well, I'm, I'm late and, and there's a problem, it's going to be competitive or whatever. But you want to, you want to find that per, uh, outfit, probably person you want to partner with and be not fundraising and then put together the round together with them. Next question? No, no question? I, I would say thank you very much. And maybe they can come to you to talk uh, after the talk because we are really running behind schedule and uh, even behind the main uh, stage. So we really have to, to go on. All right, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up, I guess. We, we will actually be kind of near the little speaker thing next door. And um, I've got some swag for Orchid in case anyone wants to come and hang out and pitch us their deal too. All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you very much.